Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar for Friday. Uh, risk disclaimer, uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss uh, and cryptocurrencies uh, as well. So that's uh, the new offering here. Uh, they all involve substantial risk of loss and are not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. For more information, go to <clears throat> bookmap.com. There's a free 14-day trial of the uh, of the platform. Uh, it comes along with education, so you get access as well to the educational course. It's a four-part series, uh, and then there are there is access to the advanced order flow webinars. Okay, and um, those are immediately following this webinar at 11 Eastern time. Uh, so the idea here and the concept is 14 days of the trial of the platform. Okay, become educated in these platform details webinars uh, and then become educated in understanding order flow uh, through the uh, educational course and how Bookmap helps you understand order flow. Uh, and then the advanced um, uh, live um, webinars go through uh, and support the educational uh, content that's in the course, uh, but in the live markets. So we practice what we preach. Uh, there are other uh, educational resources as well, and um, uh, if any questions, uh, reach us at support at bookmap.com. Okay, uh, go through the um, uh, the website here. Uh, you can see that uh, a new offering for the digital currencies, as you can see here. We'll just scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> There's an intro video here, uh, a bit further down, uh, information about Bookmap. Uh, this is for the free this free webinar here, the platform details webinar, and I'm going to update this after uh, today's webinar, so you'll be able to register again. Uh, just going through the uh, basic benefits here, uh, the bu uh, button here for trying Bookmap, uh, some testimonials, um, the Bookmap for equities. Okay, so it's not just for futures, uh, nor, nor just equities. Now it's also for cryptocurrencies or digital currencies. Uh, but uh, this is a really nice data feed that we've uh, been offering now. Uh, it's not through us, it's through uh, DX feed or dev experts. Uh, just um, really good feed. Uh, you can read about the advantages here uh, and you get uh, NASDAQ total view, but this is all U.S. equities. Okay, so uh, it will include uh, those equity, U.S. equities that are traded at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, et cetera. All right, a bit further down, connectivity. All right, so this is important. Uh, we are a software platform. We are not a data provider. You will need data, uh, a connection uh, to the markets in order to run Bookmap in the live environment. <clears throat> uh, you can see that there are some other platforms here as well, like NinjaTrader, TTX Trader Pro, uh, and Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation. Okay, we also connect via the API of these three platforms. However, we are a platform just as they are. Uh, so you can connect directly with CQG, Rhythmic, Gain, uh, IQ Feed, Transact, and then the dev experts I mentioned here for NASDAQ Total View. All right, and uh, digital currencies, well, um, that uh, we'll, we'll wait until that version seven comes out. I'll be demoing version seven, uh, but uh, the offering there for the uh, digital currencies and uh, what kind of data feed it is, et cetera. All right, we'll go through that uh, uh, when we launch that, which should be in mid-January here. Okay, a bit further down. Uh, this is the free trial, okay, that I mentioned. 14-day uh, free trial for Bookmap Basic, Advanced, or Quants. You can reach out to us here uh, for your own proprietary needs. Uh, Bookmap Basic is 49 per month. Uh, the Bookmap Advanced is 99 per month. Okay, they are both or each billed quarterly. You get that 14-day trial period, and the differences between the two uh, are the add-ons, okay? Add-on features here. So one is the ability to trade right from the bookmap chart. It's quite a nice advantage because you can see the liquidity map in front of you and therefore react uh, to the um, uh, that liquidity uh, instead of just kind of blindly placing your orders. So for example, front run high liquidity if you want to Look for a higher probability of getting filled or hide your stops behind areas of high liquidity uh, to protect that stop just a bit more than uh, uh, if you didn't have that uh, heat map there. 
right? Large lot tracker, iceberg detector. It's not not only do these proprietary indicators that we've developed um, uh, give you insight uh, to uh, order flow and and the order book, but we're starting to identify larger players. Okay, so the uh, who's holding a large amount of liquidity at specific price levels, or who's getting filled with hidden orders uh, using icebergs. And uh, we also have some volume and book and balance uh, indicators and a correlation tracker. Okay, if uh, if you don't have a data feed, you can click here and uh, get a trial of a data feed. Uh, and um, uh, then also subscribe or uh, do the trial here for, for Bookmap. So add these two together uh, and you'll be able to... Uh, uh, basically, you have uh, 14 days uh, free free data and free book map uh, just so you can check it out and see if this is the direction you want to go. Uh, if you can't decide which plan you want, you can click here for the complete comparison list. Okay. All right. Social media, you can follow us here uh, at bookmap underscore pro. Okay. Latest up-to-date information. Or uh, you can also... Um, uh, subscribe to our YouTube page and just briefly go through it. All sorts of content here. So uh, the uh, YouTube page, uh, I would recommend starting here with the intro videos. You can click on the playlist right here. Okay. And then maybe watch some of the features and components playlist here. Uh, and then um, uh, a bit further down, these video snippets. Uh, these are the uh, concepts in the order flow uh, that we go through uh, in the uh, advanced analysis webinar uh, in detail. So you get these very concise videos that go through the concept uh, and illustrate one aspect uh, and trying to be very clear and concise. Uh, and then, um, uh, so this is kind of a quick way uh, to start to understand order flow uh, and how Bookmap uh, displays it or gives you kind of a, a advantage uh, through the visualization. Uh, that uh, phenomena that uh, you really can't see uh, otherwise. So anyway, uh, those are, uh, watch some of these videos as well, uh, and um, uh, I think that you'll find them helpful. Uh, all right, let's take a look at Bookmap and what's going on. Okay, and this is uh, Bitcoin actually. So, and this is uh, Bitcoin. This is going to be for the... Um, uh, new version. This is uh, book map seven, and you can see the colored heat map here uh, that we have. But um, uh, I'll cover maybe, if, unless you guys want to look at some of the digital currencies, uh, we can do that. I have also Ethereum. Uh, but uh, the main point I want to make here is this offering here with GDAX. It's going to be through the GDAX exchange. Uh, it's quite nice. Uh, you can see that the market right now is one tick wide here, and there is plenty of liquidity. All right, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the dome here. Uh, there are 29 coins at this price level, okay, of uh, it's basically 16,000. So there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of liquidity at, the, at these price levels. So there's plenty of liquidity. Uh, and, um, uh, and plus the spreads are, um, are, like I said, one tick wide in a lot of cases. So anyway, that's uh, GDAX. Uh, and uh, let's jump into NASDAQ uh, and take a look at what's going on there. Uh, you can see the, uh, let's uh, just zoom out a little bit here. All right. Well, here's our 930 open. You see the volume really picks up now. Uh, we've got these new sliders here. So I can uh, actually bring down the uh, dot size quite a bit. Okay. All right. Now it looks like uh, there is a lot of activity going on in this chart. Okay. And um, I just want to mention here, we're going to simplify this because it's really very straightforward market data uh, that is being displayed here. It's just being displayed in a very unique and original way uh, that gives you insight uh, that's uh, rather difficult to see in other charts. And I'll, I'll demo that for you. So there's just three elements here. Uh, the first element is historical best bid and offer. Okay, there's there's no aggregation here in bars or candles. Uh, and um, then you see these dots here. These are uh, th these are transactions on the historical best bid and offer. And then you can see this heat map here. 
All right, so it uh, starts off as kind of a darker gray and then goes to blue, then white, then yellow, then orange. Orange is the highest area of liquidity. What we've done here in the heat map is record the, uh, the order book, the depth of market, and then project it onto the chart historically. So you can see exactly where uh, the liquidity lies. Okay, um, so that's it. Those are the three elements here. Now you, you can see the way we have, this is a new indicator here. I, actually, I'm gonna turn that off. Um, and I'm gonna turn off a whole bunch of other uh, data here. And we're just gonna look at a candlestick uh, for the moment here. Uh, and um, and then that is it. Okay, just to simplify things. Okay, and let me clear all of these drawings here. Just a moment here. Whoops, that's not the right one this one there we go okay so just to clarify here uh, what exactly you're looking at um, uh, in book map and com to compare it to so we have a reference here okay so here's a five minute candlestick chart okay we all know open high low close of a, of a period here the bars the wicks etc uh, and you know we can start to read the, the buying and selling pressure in some of these areas but at best uh, this is kind of uh, uh, an art form or speculation, looking at some of these these patterns in the candles. Well, we really we really don't know, uh, and um, uh, there's just a lack of clarity here uh, for all sorts of reasons. The number one reason, or the first reason, is that um, this is aggregated data, okay, within a time period. Okay, now you might be looking at an aggregated period uh, with volume bars. Uh, that's not time-based, uh, or range bars, um, Renko bars, uh, rotational bars. It doesn't matter. It's still aggregated data. Okay. Now, the nice thing about aggregation is that it's easier to plot and look at higher time frames. Uh, however, there's all sorts of data here that we just don't see, uh, and that's that's a problem with the uh, aggregation. Uh, and the way that Bookmap very simply and easily um, solves that issue is by just showing historical best bid and offer. That's it. So here we go. Um, the red line here is the historical best offer, and the green is the historical best bid. Okay. Now we're starting to see, without aggregation, all sorts of price activity and action within uh, those uh, that five-minute period. Okay. So. Let's zoom in here, and I can see a breakout right down here. Okay, and this is what occurred. Okay, uh, we actually broke down here, traded down below this uh, this area around. Um, uh, what was it here? It looks like uh, 66.23, and then um, uh, we went. Uh, we we actually accepted down below. Okay, and then we broke out above again. Okay, that's what occurred uh, within all of this range here. Right, and uh, candlesticks showing a little bit of that range, uh, but um, uh, what we want to see though uh, is um, uh, this kind of microstructural data, um, and um, uh, we can see one of them here within this five-minute period. Okay, it broke out, it kind of went sideways for a bit, and then it broke up again. Okay, and then it came back down and tested again. Okay, where did it test to? Where it was down here, where it broke out from. Right here it is. This is the first retest. This is a second retest. We can also see a third one, uh, you know, later here uh, in, uh, uh, you know, about 10 minutes later, I guess, or, or something like that. Uh, so this kind of microstructural data is lost in the candlestick chart. I, we just don't see it. Okay, and that's the kind of clarity I, I'm, I'm speaking of uh, when we're just uh, uh, comparing historical best bid and offer and all price activity compared to aggregation. Okay. But that's not it. Uh, that's just the first, first step here. Uh, and it's the first piece of data that we're showing here in the book map chart. The second piece uh, is the volume. Okay. Now there's no volume on this candlestick chart. We have a sub chart of volume, but uh, this is uh, really, really opaque at best. Uh, we have no idea where the volume actually traded. Uh, on the candlestick, uh, we have no idea when exactly it traded, uh, and we have um, 
uh, no clue to the the size uh, in in those specific areas and the type okay of trader aggressive buying or selling okay all of that is just is just not in this chart okay and um, uh, bookmap will uh, easily uh, display that by just showing these volume dots okay and then let's bring up the size of the dots a little bit okay so the dots here uh, are volume uh, that traded uh, on the chart okay uh, on the historical best bid and offer so we know precisely where the volume traded and uh, we know what type it is a green dot is uh, market buy red is market sell and the uh, we know when the location and we also have it and this is key uh, we have it within the microstructure okay so this little breakout area here uh, we want to understand um, uh, what kind of volume and how much traded up in this area within the candlestick okay and bookmap is telling us this right right in here in fact at this point we can just probably take the candlestick off uh, and uh, and get some more insight here okay nice cluster of volume trading up in these areas here uh, also here uh, start to start to note it here right and um, this is where uh, we, we're putting all the all the pieces together with uh, structure and and just volume uh, look down here okay where, where is all that selling uh, we, we need to see big red dots down in these areas here uh, if we're going to get price discovery further to the downside okay well we don't get that in fact we we're making uh, uh, structurally uh, we're making a, um, a higher low uh, and uh, and then we make a higher higher high just just barely here uh, come back into the range but then that it retests uh, here and then uh, continues to the upside right so all sorts of activity uh, that we're able to start to piece together that gives us a, a much more holistic view of the marketplace and these are only two elements on the chart okay uh, there is that third element which is the heat map okay and then we're going to see um, where they're bidding and offering not just transacting uh, here uh, on the chart and that's uh, that's shown in the heat map uh, now um, uh, we usually uh, look at that data uh, and digest it uh, with a dome the, the depth of market okay and here uh, is the dome and book map this COB column all right we can see that uh, there's uh, you know liquidity here on the um, on the bid liquidity here on the offer uh, and um, that's that's the that's the market being made uh, this is the auction that's going on at this point okay now this is historical here because uh, uh, we're, we kind of reviewing back in time here we can go we can go back to the current market here okay and this is the live market right so uh, to the right of this vertical white line here uh, what we're looking at in this window uh, is the, uh, the the current best bid and offer right and this number is the last traded volume here's our price ladder and then this current order book here well here's our best bid and offer here and then you can see that the liquidity here on the uh, uh, on the offer and the liquidity here on the bid okay these are traders lining up providing liquidity at these price levels okay they want to be buyers down here they want to be sellers up here and we can very easily spot uh, areas of high liquidity like 153 contracts up here at 39 okay on the uh, on the offer I'm mean, on the bid they're down here around this uh, 6629 area okay we see we can see the uh, we have a graphical representation in this column as well that's just giving me bars and I have numeric value uh, here uh, in this COB column okay it's just by right clicking in here and formatting it differently uh, that you can uh, uh, get those different uh, uh, configurations you know if you want to look at bars only bars and numbers or just numbers only right okay so this is good this is a good view all right we we know where there's the high liquidity uh, and uh, in in the market right now and let's zoom in a little bit more and just get a little more detail here uh, we have the historical best bid and offer that gives us the microstructure right and we also have the um, the volume the transactions in that microstructure right so not bad uh, you know we, we're seeing uh, quite quite a bit but, but the problem with this uh, view here uh, is in in the dome uh, it's only giving us the current market 
right? And that's a, a lacking transparency here because when these numbers um, update and change, it we we don't know what was there before, okay? And so we we um, we can't see how they were behaving over time unless you memorize these areas, right? And Bookmap solves that issue by recording it, okay, in the heat map. All right, so if I turn on the heat map here, now we can see these areas of high liquidity uh, in this window with the best bid and offer are given a graphical representation. Okay, high liquidity is in this case is, is this orange color, high, uh, less a little less is this yellow color, and then here's the scaling here as you can see in the heat map. So from dark gray for very low liquidity on up to blue is higher, uh, white higher than uh, yellow, and then the highest is uh, this orange color. Right now, there's another setting here as well uh, with this colored heat map in version seven, and we can look at red as being the highest. Okay, it gives even more insight. Okay, I'm going to stick with this one though, uh, just to kind of make it simple. Uh, and um, but uh, this is where uh, we can um, uh, start to see when the numbers change here in the dome in the current market, they'll be they'll change here with the heat map, and you, you'll see. Uh, the, the heat map change color, okay? And uh, when it does, though, uh, this is where we go beyond the current order book because we record the data here and project it on the chart historically. So look at these two little areas here at 33 and 36, okay? Note how the, the striations here in the heat map, it got a little brighter here or a little more blue, and then it turned white, a little bit of yellow, and then it got dark again. This is the adding and pulling of liquidity at this price level. Okay, it's all recorded here in Bookmap. Note how it just got got brighter here, and then they just pulled. So it went from 77 contracts down to 64. That's the the reflection here in the heat map and the historical view of it. Okay, all sorts of insight can be gained from this. We can start to spot larger players. We can understand their behavior, uh, and um, uh, we can see where longer uh, liquidity that seems to uh, be real, that meaning that it stays in the book and wants to trade, compared to high liquidity short term that has no intent to trade. Uh, and um, it looks like it just wants to kind of skew the uh, order book and the auction. All right. So uh, anyway, those are uh, that's the, uh, the historical view here of this heat map. And it gives us tremendous insight. We can see where, where are we channeling? Why are we channeling between uh, uh, this uh, 36 and 33 area? It's because that's where the liquidity is. And uh, we can see that we're channeling there. And why are we starting to break out now? Well, look at them look, pulling their liquidity here. We can see that behavior. So where's the target? It's right here at 37 and a half. And they're starting to pull now too. So actually, they were going to trade through it, and we're going to come up, and we're going to trade into, and look at them at 38 and a quarter. They're also pulling. So 39 is now the the uh, the, um, the target. Okay. If the market wants to um, uh, find uh, sellers, it's got to come up to 39. Right. So there it is. There's our move right up into 39. All right. So a very quick move there, but uh, you know we we saw it unfold in real time. Uh, and um, just by simply understanding liquidity here, we're not even looking at the traded volume. We just know that that's where the market needs to go in order to trade. Okay, and it indeed did that. All right now, we're seeing all sorts of phenomena here already. This is a flip of the order book. Uh, what was on the uh, offer has now flipped to the bid with 100 contracts. Okay, uh, that uh, is kind of tightening the uh, uh, the area here. So it looks like. I mean, they're pulling, kind of adding and pulling, and they're down a little bit lower here as well. So we might, we may come down and retest 37, and that's where we broke from just now, as well. But uh, you can understand now areas of support and resistance, or just if price is going to accept above this uh, this new this this range here into a new range, and that's what that's what it seems to be doing right now. Okay. It's uh, we're getting price discovery upside up outside of that range, and uh, and still um, uh, continuing to discover uh, areas. Okay, and this is very typical 
uh, in a breakout. Okay, we, we see it all the time. Uh, nice breakout. Nice. It's now we can start to look at not only the liquidity but uh, uh, the transactions. Okay, this auctioned off pretty nicely here. Uh, you know, this is a nice big uh, uh, green dots here pulling the market up, and then the same thing is occurring yet again. Okay, so this is looking good. All right, uh, and uh, where is it going to go? Well, we can start to maybe look at and zoom out, and this is where you're going to find the heat map very insightful uh, is that uh, now we can start to look at larger areas on higher time frames so we don't have to look for scalping a tick or two or a point or two now we can start to outline larger areas and use this um, historical depth of market view um, for those higher time frames okay so let's zoom vertically a little bit uh, and uh, well, we see that there, you know, there's quite a bit of liquidity up here around this 48 and a half area. Okay, and we also have 66.50 up here. Okay, so maybe we'll come up and uh, and test into that area too. All right, or we can start to also put together some technical analysis here, uh, and we want to start to view, uh, for example. Uh, these. Um, you know possibilities where you, you know we we may be in a in a evaluation uh, price channel here and then uh, uh, you know so maybe it's overvalued up here okay well we can look at the order book now if this is what you you know this is a kind of a technical analysis that that you utilize or maybe you're using the indicator okay we have a um, an indicator here in the sub chart that shows the uh, cumulative volume delta Okay. And uh, this cumulative volume delta here, let me just get rid of that. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe you're looking at an overbought, oversold uh, uh, type of evaluation uh, and then uh, uh, up with a, a price channel, uh, et cetera. But the, the point is then, well, let's, let's zoom in and let's, let's look at the order flow. Okay, what is the order flow telling us at this point? And that's what we want to know. All right. Okay, well, I mean, we see some selling coming in. Not really, not too much. A little bit here. But most of this is just it auctioned off really nicely here. So maybe this is just a small pullback into higher liquidity here. Uh, and then we're looking for those buyers to step in again for another round and, and price discovery further to the upside here. Okay. Note how they're just pulling here at 42. Okay. So we'll come, come down maybe a little bit lower here. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, uh, oh, Jesus, you, you wanted to look at the um, the, the uh, ES liquidity. Uh, okay. Let's quickly do that. And then we need to jump to the, um, uh, the next... Um, uh, the next webinar. Uh, let's see here. Where's the ES? Okay. You want to look at uh, 2729. Okay. Here we are. Okay, and this was a while back. I'm sorry, Jesus. I, um, uh, this was about 10 minutes ago. I see your question. Um, yeah. I mean, um, not a lot. Uh, but, uh, you know, same same type of thing here is, uh, I mean, you can see this kind of activity here. Actually, this this kind of looks like, a, you know, a skew of the book here in the ES, uh, trying to maybe spoof, especially, you know, we can start to identify these players, pulled the high liquidity from here, added it up higher here, perhaps trying to get it up into the goal of this 2732, which looks like it was successful. Uh, and... Um, uh, now we need to see if, uh, you know, uh, these these guys up here uh, are still interested in selling in these areas or, uh, you know, are, are, was this a target for short term, et cetera. Um, you know, are we going to accept or reject above uh, these areas? All right. All right, guys. Well, let's call it a day and uh, we will catch up with you guys next week. And uh, if you're signed up with the trial, we'll see you in the next in the next webinar. OK, take care. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.
Oh, uh, you want access to the next one. Okay. Uh, yeah, we usually do that on Fridays. So let me, uh, let me get that set up here. Okay. So, uh, look in the chat box there. Okay. And let me get it. Okay. So go ahead and click on it there and register and uh and we'll see you over in the uh uh the advanced order flow analysis webinar okay guys yeah take care bye bye